Hi, my name is Christy Lee. I'm a DJ for WJTL Radio right here in Central Pennsylvania. And today I'm so excited to be talking with somebody from our area and also from around the globe. I want to say hello to Alyssa Lee, worship leader at Victory Church here in Central Pennsylvania. Hey, Alyssa. Hi, Christy Lee. It's nice to see you again. I know, Christy Lee and Alyssa Lee. And I also <laughs> want to say a hi to Shandi Sacha from, uh, from Jakarta, Indonesia. Hello, Shandi. How are you? Hi, Christy. Doing great here. Thank God for, despite the pandemic, there's always things to be thankful of. Amen to that. So today we're going to be talking about an upcoming event that Global Disciples is doing. It's called Nations Worship, and we'll dig into this in a little bit. Nations, plural, and I'm not just talking about our nation and Shandi's nation. I'm talking about an additional 60 plus. So we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, last time I talked to Alyssa, it was way earlier in the whole pandemic. I don't know that we had quite a clue what was going to happen. So Alyssa, tell us, how are things right now at Victory Church? Yeah, things have been awesome here at Victory. We opened um, back to in-person services in mid-September. We were doing um, watch parties throughout the entire summer, and then we just felt it was time to open up our doors September 13th. And so we did, and all of our campuses are open, all of our service times are open, um, and it's just really, really exciting to see um, how God's working even through all of that. We are seeing our regular attenders are coming back. We're even seeing brand new faces that are coming back into the buildings too, some maybe even for the first time. Um, and it's just really, really cool to, to hear stories of those people a lot of them have been coming because of what we had the opportunity to do during the shutdown with being online. And so God has been so faithful and we can't wait to see how he's going to continue to be faithful in the years and the months to come. This has been a really hard season, I think, for the planet. Um, so many restrictions have interestingly helped the church to grow in ways that have actually brought new people through the doors. So people have been connecting online through with churches that have not been before. So you have new people coming to Victory Church because they've connected with you online through the shutdown, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, we had been, um, we, we have a streaming service that we had been doing for several years prior to it. So fortunately, we were already set up and ready to go with that. It was just making some adjustments with our teams internally to make sure that it happened. Um, and it was cool to even see the camaraderie and the collaboration with our staff, some of us that never get to work together in the capacity that we are because we are multi-site. Um, so that was super, super exciting. <laughs> we almost didn't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that. I'm, I've heard that from other churches too. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. I want to talk with Shandi as well. Shandi is from Jakarta, Indonesia, which is the um, has the highest population of Muslim people in the whole world, uh, with eighty percent. That is a huge number. Yeah. So I'm so curious, Shandi, to hear first of all, how has the pandemic affected normal life in Indonesia? Well, I think um, it has been a, quite a shock to almost every nation that's been impacted. Um, one, I think now it's increasingly um, more significant is how the economy, after the, the, the crisis, the initial impact is the economy. I think um, it has highly impacted the economy in Indonesia. And I, I'm sure it's also the same in other countries. Um, in Jakarta, especially, because it's the capital city and also the the largest city with the highest economy it's been the hardest hit um i think a lot of people have been furloughed uh and a lot of businesses have to adjust but despite all that i think there is a i really think like god is doing something great where all the unnecessary things are being stripped down that people thing they need turns out through this season God is showing that no that's not really what you need it was just once and once and once and this season only brings uh the light to shine even brighter yeah I think that's that's true and that's what so many people are saying it's it's mysterious how God moves but it's amazing that he's using all of this in such a, a way that's creating health and vibrancy in the church um, so Shandi is a professional musician and a worship leader. 
So professional musician, what, what are you a professional singer, a guitar player? What is your instrument? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't really sing. Um, yeah, I usually, um, <laughs> I play the drums. That's my major. I used to study music full time and, um, and I had my degree in music. Um, I studied drums contemporary for contemporary music, rock, jazz. Um, I also, we had to study classical as well um, as the basis for harmony. It's basically almost everything that you would normally study in a music school. So yeah, I, uh, that's what I did. I worked as a professional musician for a couple of years and now not so much, but because of the pandemic, now that um, I don't have to spend as much time traveling um, or commuting to work, that those tiny bits of extra times pulled together adds up to like about two to three extra hours every day. And I've been trying to dig back into music and producing at home, so which is good. You don't I, spend too much time, um, not, well, I think it's been more productive than ever. <laughs> that's great. I, I love that you are, um, that drums is, is your instrument because I noticed in watching some videos preparing for this that in many other nations, the drum is the only thing that they are using um, to have a group worship session. So it's, you know, if you have a bunch of people, I mean, you can worship without any instruments, but to have a drum, um, that, that'll that get things going too. And then, you know, other instruments might be bonus. But I noticed that in a lot of cases, that was the one instrument being used in, in the worship set. So maybe you'll be able to lead from yeah. there, you know, you can it's do it. It's the easiest and everybody needs to, yeah. yeah, everybody, somebody needs to keep everyone's time together. Exactly. <laughs> keep us all united. Uh, so Shani, what, what has, uh, how has the pandemic affected the church in Indonesia? Uh, I mean, I'm already curious, what does the church look like if it's 80% Muslim? Um, do you have religious freedom where you are? Is, is the church growing where you are? talk a little bit about about the church and the pandemic so before the pandemic um indonesia is as you've mentioned before it's true that we are uh statistically we're the largest muslim country on earth and we have a population of 260 million so i think we're among the top 10 of the most populated country u.s china india being the top three but then after that it's a race between indonesia and bangladesh and Nigeria, but yeah, we're among the most populated country. And um, we're thankful that the government is, until today, is trying to be as neutral as possible and giving a equal opportunity. But the fact on the ground is there are persecutions happening and it's coming from the, the local uh, communities, especially um, because there are a lot of, um, not the majority, but there are significant um, power of fundamentalist um, Muslims that are, um, they are closing down churches and then they are, um, when people are having home church, there are raids towards the homes in several areas. And there are areas that um, where you cannot, uh, you cannot even have church or home church. There are certain areas like that. Because we, um, I think we, um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Indonesia, but we consist of 13,000 islands. So within those 13,000 islands, there are five major islands. So uh, the five biggest islands, uh, Jakarta is among one of those uh, five. Uh, it's called the island of Java, and Jakarta is a city that's in the island of Java, the highest uh, populated city. So with that, uh, I think it spreads across the nation. It's kind of, I mean, if you guys um, uh, talk to some of the people at Global, they probably can tell you like which area is mostly Muslim, which areas um, have a predominantly Christian. So actually the Eastern side of Indonesia has more um, Christian population than the Western side. Um, so it's kind of easier to find churches on the Eastern side than on the Western side. So anyways, that was before the pandemic. Now, with the pandemic, uh, I think um, a lot of churches are now trying to, to gather online. So they have a lot of streaming service. But 
I think there's a interesting phenomenon where people who used to go to a certain church, they start going to different churches because now it's a lot easier to go church hopping uh, where they find which church fits their style the most. But the thing is, um, it becomes really one way because it's, it's a stream, right? So you attend the service and then after the service, you're basically with the people in your house. You don't get to hang out at the lobby after church. You don't get to build relationships after the church. So I think the meaningful relationships that we've developed with our church friends before the pandemic, those are the ones that, um, that I find um, the people uh, I can relate with. And then we talk uh, about the sermons after we pray together, we still have our cell groups, which I think it's, it's really amazing what Global has been doing. It's as if God is preparing us for the season because it's the relationships built before. Now <laughs> with the pandemic, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's very unique what, what works in the pandemic right now. Shandi's wife is also a part of Global Disciples. Tell us a little bit about her involvement. Yes. So my wife, Deborah, um, she is um, the nation's uh, national, director. the national director. <laughs> Great. Yeah, she's, she's right over there, I, but she's I not in the tell. interview. Cause, <laughs> cause like, get the exact, hello, Deborah, me. get the exact <laughs> right title for your wife. Uh, so coming up, we've got this event that's called Nations Worship. I understand during this pandemic. This and, is my one. Oh, hi, Deborah. Hello. <laughs> is that a New York t-shirt? <laughs> is she wearing the-, the Is that a New York t-shirt? Yes, yes that is. it's a Andy Warhol New York t-shirt, I think. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> Hello, yes. so good to see you. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited about this Nations Worship event and the heart behind it, um, because while you're right, Shandi, we have been able to still stream church. It is very different than- corporately gathering together you know you you do still have a lot of the same things but you are missing that that extra something that takes it to another community level being able to gather in the lobby to talk about the sermon together to experience it you know all at the same time um so this event coming up is all about getting together uniting in worship from all across the planet um, Alyssa, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about this event coming up in November? Yeah, so it's happening on Friday, November 20th. It is going to be an online experience that we are streaming um, to really anyone that has the link. We're going to host it here at the at our uh, Greenfield campus, again, strictly online. But the cool thing about it is that we're going to be, um, myself and some of our, our worship directors here and some volunteers are going to be leading worship in a couple of very familiar songs um, that have been popular throughout the years. And we're going to be able to experience um, worship from other countries, some countries where they're just now being um, seen and heard on camera um, with worshiping. Um, to Jesus, which is super, super cool. Um, and we're going to get some video updates of what's going on with Global Disciples all across the world. But the big heart behind it is that we are worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together as not just one state, not just as one church, um, but as an entire world, we're going to worship him together. Knowing that the entire world might be able to relate to each other in the category of feeling anxious feeling isolated. Um, I know, I know a lot of people, this has done a number on us. It's required extra motivation and initiative within our own hearts and minds to focus on Jesus, to really let your faith rise up, uh, because we're going through a lot to, and all at the same time, you know, this is affecting it's sweeping the planet. And so, um, I think uniting together, I think having this experience together is really, really powerful. Um, Let's talk a little bit about doing a, a thing like this across the planet, 62 different nations involved. What language are you going to be singing it? Is it English the whole time? 
Well, when, when here, when we've got the four live songs that are happening here, they will be English. But when we get the videos from um, all of the other countries, it is in their own languages, which is just going to be so beautiful. Um, one thing that I absolutely love in the book of Revelation, chapter seven, verse 19, it describes a great multitude of every tribe and every language worshiping before the throne of God. And what an amazing opportunity that we get to get a tiny glimpse of what heaven might look like when we get there just by worshiping Jesus together. Together. And what it might sound like too. Yeah, exactly. So your songs that you're doing, do you already have an idea of what songs they are? We do. Yep. Um, one off the top of my head um, is the song Christ is Enough from Hillsong Worship. Um, it's a timely song. It's a familiar song. And so even though we're doing it live here, um, we're, we were trying to pull songs too that globally people knew um, that were familiar, even though we're going to be singing in a language people might not know. They'll at least hopefully be able to pick up on, on the tune and, um, and sing in their own language too of, um, with, with worshiping. Shandi, I'm curious what songs you're singing in your country. I've heard from, from other people, sometimes they sing American songs, American worship songs in English or in their own language, or maybe it's something different. So what kind of songs are you singing right now in the church in Indonesia? So in the church, the church that I go to is an international English service church. So um, before the pandemic, I think we play a lot of uh, hill songs, um, also songs from Elevation, um, I think Jesus Culture, Bethel. So we play a lot of that. But before I attended that church, I uh, used to attend a, a local Indonesian church. And we usually uh, sing, it's very rare that we sing English uh, songs. And even on the times when we do sing that, it's usually the ones that are translated. Might be a familiar tune like a hymn, but it's translated and sung in Indonesian. Interesting. So, do you have an idea from the part that you're, as I understand it, Shandi, you're getting some musicians together in Indonesia for your part during yes. Nations Worship? So, do you have a set list already? Do you have an idea of what songs you'll be contributing? Yeah. So, I think um, we've prepared two songs. One is um, How Great Thou Art. I'm not sure if, um, if hopefully there's no um, technical difficulties when we're, uh, we're sharing the, because the thing with, uh, with this pandemic is it's so difficult to gather musicians together. And if you ever play any music over the Zoom, if you've ever attempted that, you'll notice to have the time sync together is so hard. So, so um, Basically, uh, we, we tried to prepare for two songs. One is How Great Thou Art, and the other is, um, is a, an Indonesian song. It's a worship song written by Indonesian um, songwriters. It's called Manikmati Kasih, which I've, I've sent the translation for the lyric. Um, the title is Enjoying God's Love. That's awesome. You're definitely right that Zoom can make tempo. A real I will not challenge. Try to sing it for you guys. <laughs> so, will this event be live, or are you pre-recording your segments ahead of time? How is all of that working, Alyssa? Yeah, so it's a little bit of both. The event itself is going to be live. Um, at 7.30 with hosts that we have here from Global Disciples that are coming. The worship here at Victory is going to be live. Um, I believe there are going to be some segments like what Shandi's saying that are going to be live that we're going to stream um, from other platforms, some interviews we're going to be doing that are live, but there's also going to be some pre-recorded um, singing and interviews that we're also going to be. So it's a whole blend um, of everything combined. And Shandi, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting to have your part involved. Is this going to be happening at a very, I mean, if it right now it's the early, it's the morning for us, mid morning. And it's, I understand getting close to maybe 10, 10 o'clock, nine o'clock in the evening there. So are you having to wake up early to do this event on November 20th? Is it going to be like a time, a, a major time difference for you? He's frozen like his favorite ice cream here in Lancaster County. <laughs> oh, we lost him. Alyssa, 
I, I think that probably you and I can wrap it up. I would love meeting Shandi and I know he's been here in Lancaster County before he and his wife, Deb are a part of Global Disciples. And uh, so it'll be interesting to hear more from him during the event. Alyssa, if people want to get involved with Nations Worship, what are their options? Yep, they can check out uh, the Global Disciples um, website. I believe it's globaldisciples.com.org. I'm not sure the exact one. Just type in Global Disciples into um, Google and you'll find da it. It's dot org. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. It is dot org. Um, and the, the link that we're going to be using for that night is going to be there. Um, if you want to host an in person watch party at your home, you can check out their website. They've got all of the. Um, instructions will um, have all the instructions and directions on how to, how to make that happen. But we look forward to uh, worshiping with you in your home, online, all across the country on Friday, November 20th at 7.30 p.m. You can host a watch party in your home or at your church. You can also sponsor the event. You know, always great to contribute and uh, invest in something that you believe in that's doing something powerful all across the world. So Alyssa, thanks for joining me. Shandi, I'm so glad that you are back to be able to wrap up the interview. That would have been so heartbreaking. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> we were saying that you were frozen like your, um, like your favorite ice cream here in Lancaster County laughs ice cream <laughs> <laughs> i was asking shandy before the interview what his favorite flavor is shandy you want to tell everybody what your answer was about favorite flavor of laps ice cream i think the vanilla ice cream or the original one is the best but you can mash it up with everything else and it'll taste as great butterscotch is especially good Ooh, that does sound good i think you know it's good ice cream if vanilla is good you know what i mean if vanilla isn't good, then we yes, think we have yes. a problem. So that's that's my take on it. <laughs> Shandi, thank you so much for joining us. And Alyssa, thank you too. Good to catch up with you here, how things are progressing at your church right here in our area. I just bless what you guys are up to. This is so important. I think worship is so important. Not only does it unite us, it does uh, change our focus. It shifts our perspective. It gives us language to communicate with God, which right now we're processing so much. Communicating with God is essential. So this event coming up, Nations Worship on November 20th, 730 Eastern. I think, I don't know if we said Eastern yet. Eastern no. time, probably very important when there are nations from Africa, Asia, and the Americas involved. Check it out at globaldisciples.org. Shandi and Alyssa, thank you so much for talking today. Thank you. This is great. Thank you.